שלום משפחה, peace be unto you, שלום פמלה, שלום ישראל. This is your brother Ben Sedek, and today we are going to look at a mohed, an appointment known as tabernacle, sukkot, sukko, sukka in Hebrew for singular, and sukkot means plural, tabernacles. And we're going to look at what it says in the scripture and what it all means in the short clip. Let's look at Leviticus 23, or Wahikwa 23, starting about, about verse 33. It says, And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children, B'nai Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. And the first day shall be a set-apart convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, and the eighth day shall be a a set apart convocation unto, unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. Let's jump down for time's sake to verse 39. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto Yahweh seven days, and the first day shall be a Shabbat, and on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees and the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim seven days and you shall keep it as a feast unto Yahweh seven days in the year it shall be a statute forever in your generations you shall celebrate it in the seventh month you shall dwell in booths seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. Ani Yahweh Elohecha, I am Yahweh your Elohim. Hallelujah. So right here, many people make this mistake of calling it Jewish feast or Hebrew Israelite feast. They are not. At the beginning of um, Yikra Leviticus 23, it is known as Yahweh Mohedim, the appointment of Yahweh. Not the appointment of Israel or the appointment of Jews, Yahudim, but the appointment of Yahweh. Okay, so that's what they are. These are Yahweh's fees, these appointments, not man's appointment, not Jews, not Hebrews, but Yahweh's appointment. Now, let's look at what this beautiful Mohed represents, this beautiful feast. Well, if you remember, um, Yah has given us seven. Mohedim, seven appointments throughout the year. And the last one is Tabernacle. And the last day of Tabernacle, which we'll do on another video, is called the Great Day, Hoshana Rabbah. But if you notice, it's at the end. Why? All the other feasts, they, 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 um, they kind of remind us or they symbolize um, you know, bondage, freedom, um, Father's deliverance. Um, you know, each one carry a different meaning. But at the end, the last one, Tabernacle, is the only one that you rejoice for seven days. The sages, the historians have wrote that if you want to see Israel celebrate in ancient time, you will have to go to a Sukkot, a Tabernacle, and you'll see. They document that they'll march around the city for seven days. With your palms and your branches of goodly trees as commanded in scripture and they'll rejoice before Yahweh and wave these branches which symbolizes agriculture, um, fruitfulness, blessings that he has um, given to his people Israel. Okay, beautiful time, a time of rejoicing. But why sukkah? Why do they dwell in boats? Well, all of these have symbolical meaning. For example, ancient Israel was in Mitzrayim, which means bondage in Egypt, and the people were being oppressed by the oppressors for 430 years, and they cried out unto Yah, and Yah delivered Israel. Now, first, before he made a covenant with them, he had to first bring them from out of the city. In Hebrew, the word city is her, which means, also means chaos. So you have to bring them from chaos and bring them forth into the wilderness, Midbar in Hebrew, which means solitude, which means nature, which means completeness, which means wholeness. So you have to bring them there to kind of 
purify them, so to speak. Now, when Israel went into the wilderness, if you remember, he told them, you know, you guys are going to be building boots in the future to dwell in. Why? Because it's, it's, it's symbolic. These boots have, has to be temporary shelters, meaning it's not something that um, the people who are going to dwell in them are meant to live forever. They are not supposed to be a permanent um, shelter but temporary. Why? It symbolizes we, like our father Abraham, we are passing through this wicked, evil, corrupt world. So we are temporarily dwelling here for now. So the tabernacle has to be built symbolizing us being in this system or in this world temporarily. We are in the wilderness, so to speak. Okay, We are heading to the promised land. But before we go to the promised land, the new Jerusalem, we have to stop by in the wilderness, build our Sukkot, and, we, and enjoy what Father has done for us in the past. Another beauty of the tabernacle is this. It has to be built where the occupant could look up and see the heavens, which symbolizes the higher being, Father Yah, who is above us, so to speak, metaphorically is above us. As the scripture said, the heavens declare his esteem. So we're looking at all his esteem. And one of the beauty about the tabernacle is this. Um, like I said, it reminds us that we are not, it's not supposed to be comfortable. We're not in comfort. We're not, we cannot be comfortable in this wicked sewage system that we live in. So the tabernacle has to be uncomfortable. Okay? The idea we are looking forward to go to that Jerusalem where we will dwell in the permanent tabernacle of Father Yahweh. Hallelujah. Tabernacle is awesome. Like I said, it's a time of rejoicing. And it's one of the feast of um, Deuteronomy 1616, known as the pilgrimage feast, Aliyah, where Worshippers have to go up to Jerusalem, wherever they live, three times a year. And these three feasts are unleavened bread, which the Passover is a part of it. Um, the second one is Shavuot, Pentecost. And then the third one is Tabernacle, Sukkot. These three feasts has to be kept in Jerusalem, according to the scripture. So even in the book of Zechariah, or Zechariah 14, you see where Father Yahweh promised that after the Great War, after the Great War during the millennial, all those who don't come up to Jerusalem to keep the Feast of Tabernacle, Father Yah will not bless them. Okay? They have to go up to Jerusalem. All the nations who does not go to Jerusalem, in a sense, will be cursed. So it's um, a, a more head of the past, present, and future must be kept only in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city of perfect peace. Hallelujah. So we'll do Oshana Rabbah very soon. Stay tuned and Shalom Aleichem.